On this week's MetPy Monday, we wrap up our radar series with a multi-panel radar animation. Hi, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to wrap up our radar series by making a multi-panel radar animation. Now this example requires quite a bit of code, so we're going to actually just go through this notebook. A lot of this code you've already seen before, and I'm gonna go over the parts that we haven't in a lot more detail. So we're gonna start off by using Siphon. We're going to go ahead and grab this catalog reference like we've done in the first series, and then get a radar server instance. Now we're gonna create our query. So we're gonna query around now and then for the last hour's worth of data for station BOX. We're gonna go ahead and get four different variables here. So we're gonna have things like reflectivity, hydrometeor classification, and the cross-correlation coefficient. We're gonna go ahead and use our plot radar function from last time. So what this does is takes the data and the field name that we're looking for. It then calculates the appropriate X and Y positions based on the range and azimuth data. It sets the extent of the plot and uses P color mesh to go ahead and create that mesh for the radar plot that we're used to looking at. We import the animation module. As we saw last week, we're gonna continue using artist animation. There are other ways like funk animation that you can use if your particular application warrants them. Then we're going to use one of the first files. So in this case, just the first catalog and the first data set in that catalog to get the projection information. So this will have information like the radar latitude and the radar longitude. I'm going to download the state borders as a natural earth feature for Cartopi. Stay tuned for a future MetPy Monday on how to do this without this actual import using Cartopi 0.16, which was just released. Next, we're gonna create our figure and then two empty lists. Last time we had a list for the artists that we were going to draw. This time we're also going to have an empty list for the axes as we have four different axes objects. We could go ahead and hard code Axe 1, Axe 2, Axe 3, Axe 4, but in this case, we're going to try to make things a little bit more automated so that if you wanted to have six variables or eight variables or 10 variables, however many you wanted, the plot would automatically lay out in some sensible way. So we're going to define a variable for the number of rows, in this case, two rows of plots. You could, of course, change this if you wanted more variables, maybe a three by three matrix. And then we look at the length of the catalogs list. So how many variables did we get? Since the way we made our query, we get one variable in an individual catalog. So in this case, we'll have four catalogs and we divide that by the number of rows, which is two to get two columns. So we want a two by two matrix here. Now we come to a set of compound loops. This is where all the work really happens and things get a little bit complicated. So we're going to go over the catalogs using the enumerate method. And having enumerate catalogs comma one simply means that we're going to go through each of the catalogs and number them starting at one instead of the zero default that we would normally use in Python. So panel is going to be one, two, three, or four from enumerate. And then catalog will be the appropriate catalog for whichever of the data variables we have. Okay, so now in our loop, the first thing we need to do for each variable is create a new subplot. So here we're calling fig.add subplot. We can tell it the number of rows and number of columns, so that'll be two comma two effectively. And then which panel we're working on. So one and two would be the first row, three would be the first panel on the second row, and four would be the second panel on the second row and specify our projection as proj, which is the variable we got from the base file above. We're gonna go ahead and append that axis to our axes list so we can keep track of it. We're going to add state borders 
to each of those axes, so they all have the state borders on them. And then we're going to make an empty list to hold all of the artists for that particular axis. So each one of these four axes will have a set of artists. Each artist will draw the appropriate mesh and timestamp for that time step in the radar data. Now that we're in that individual plot, we go to the second for loop. So this is an embedded for loop. This goes through each data set or each time in the catalog for an individual variable. And don't forget to have the sorted method here, otherwise you will get your radar data in a random time order, which is not that useful. So then we're gonna go ahead and get our data set, grab the field name using this handy little method that we saw before, put the time on the plot, call the plot radar function to generate the mesh. And now we're going to append that particular time step, so the text in the mesh, to axe artists. So just like last time, we have a list of lists here. Each list element contains the text and the mesh handles, and then those lists all get shoved into another list that maintains all of the timestamps for that particular axis. Now remember Python is a white space delimited language, so we have gone out a tab level here, meaning that we're outside of this for loop. So that for loop runs for each time step in our data. And then after it's done, we append those axes artists to artists. So again, we're creating a list of lists. This next part is a little bit tricky and something that would be a little bit time consuming to figure out if you haven't done this kind of manipulation before. Since we're animating multiple panels and they're stored in this sort of list of list structures, we actually need to go ahead and create frames. So we're going to take each of these per axis lists of artists and put them together into one list where each entry in that list contains all of the artists that we wanna draw on in an individual frame. So what we're going to do is create this list new artists, which is gonna be what we actually are going to animate on. And we're gonna create another empty list in this for loop that will be all of the artists that need to get drawn in an individual frame. So we're gonna call that list creatively frame. So for each of the artists in that list that we've already got, we're gonna call them panel artists. We're gonna create this new frame list. And then in this loop, so for each panel and panel artists, we're gonna use frame.extend. This is different than frame.append as we're not making a list of lists, we're just continuing to add things on. So we want one list that contains all of the artists that we need to draw in this frame. Then on the outside of that for loop, we're going to append it to the new artists list. So new artists is a list of lists and each list element is a list that contains all of the artists that need to be drawn in that particular frame. So we're just really doing a lot of list munging here to get things in a way that matplotlib wants it. If you take a second, look at this code, run through a couple iterations of these for loops, it's relatively straightforward to figure out, but like I said, it's not necessarily intuitive as to how you would write this on your own. Next, we're gonna go ahead and use artist animation. I'm using the JS, HTML, and RC Parms. And we've got this nice four panel animation that I can control. In this case, we're looking at data from the nor'easter going on in the New England area. I hope that you found this useful. I know this radar series has extended out over several Mondays now, but in the end you see we get a relatively complicated animation with really not that much code. Next week, we'll be on to a different topic. If you found this video helpful, Please don't forget to click subscribe down below so you get notifications when new videos like this come out. You can also find us on Twitter, at MetPy and at Unidata. We're also on Facebook. Just search for Unidata. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.